Hello, I'm Sarah Quell and uh, I'm here today with Hannah. Uh, you might know us from uh, First Day for Families or FAF for short. Um, Hannah is here um, because we wanted to talk a little bit more about sepsis. You might have seen her fantastic posts about sepsis and all that information over the past months as it's Sepsis Awareness Week. Um, but Hannah's got a, a more, of a, more of a story to tell about sepsis. Uh, first of all, Hannah is a paediatric nurse and has been for about 10 years. Uh, she's also a mother of four lovely children, um, but her story does start with her children. I'll pass you over to Hannah. So, um, my son, who is now five, um, caught neonatal sepsis when he was a week old. Um, completely unexpected, didn't think anything was wrong with him. He was a little bit irritable, we thought he was a bit colicky because he was yeah. a newborn, he was only a week old. Um, and we went to bed and yeah, just kind of, I woke up in the middle of the night and I was a bit like, I, said, I turned to my husband and I was well, kind of shook him awake <laughs> as we do when they're not awake Hurry in the middle of the night. Up, yeah. yeah, and I was like, I'm sure his face is swollen. And he's like, Hannah, it's the middle of the night, it's mm. probably a shadow. So I just kind of was like, okay. Um, but he was, he was boiling hot to touch. Okay. So I stripped him off and I lay him on my chest because I knew if he had a febrile convulsion, mm -hmm. I'd feel it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I know it's not what parenting guidelines are, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but I just knew that if, if, he, if, if he had a fit, I would feel it and then I would be awake. Yeah. Um, we got up the next morning and he hadn't fed all night and I was like, no, he's really not very mm. well. Um, so I tried to phone the doctors and get an appointment. They couldn't offer me an appointment till later on that day mm. and I just knew that he needed to be seen. Yeah. But being a mum, a new mum, I didn't know where to go. No. So I rocked up at my friend's house, who's Absolutely. also a children's nurse, and knocked on her door. Yeah. And I was like, I think he's really, really poorly. And she took one look at him and she was like, Hannah, we need to go to hospital right now. Okay. Um, we got to the hospital and Amy didn't really know what they were doing. Mm. Um, but as soon as we got into the neonatal unit and we were with the paediatricians and all the, the um, neonatal nurses, mm. they just sorted him out straight away. And they kind of, they were like, can we do this? Can we do this? And I was like, you do what you need to do yeah. because at the end of the day, I know he's poorly yeah. and I know that you know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so they did everything they did, a lumbar puncture, they did bloods, mm. they popped a tube down his nose so that they could get fluid into him, mm. um, cannulas. So you were in the neonatal, ne I can say it then, yeah. neonatal unit with all these tiny babies and you've got this massive eight pound baby who shouldn't really be, be there. there no. um, so they then came back to us, the doctors, and said that they thought he'd got meningitis. Okay. Um, and then they eventually came back uh, probably about a day later and said, no, no, actually he's, he's got sepsis. Yeah. Um, so he'd already been started on one lot of IV drugs and then they changed them to another lot to match the specific mm. bacteria that he was growing um, but my children don't like to do things straightforward <laughs> okay so not only had he got sepsis he'd got an abscess in his parasitic gland which is one of his salivary glands yeah okay um and that's where the sepsis was coming from right how did um, he injure himself or he did we so Nothing. we're still at a miss as to kind of where that came from okay um he was a home birth as well so mm. there was no kind of hospital contamination or anything like no. that um, and they were just completely like were baffled as to where yeah. we got it from and it was it's a rare infection but it's even more rare in children that are neonatal okay yeah. um so yeah so we then were looking at being shipped from basingstoke hospital to uh we looked at southampton great ormond street john radcliffe um, in oxford and nowhere had any beds for us. Oh my goodness. So we're sitting in the hospital every day. I've got a two year old that I'm trying to kind of tell, oh, it's okay, like yeah, this is all fine. Keep cheerful. Yeah, Don't scare the keep the, the routine for him. Yeah. And, and we've got this kind of baby that we're in hospital with going, he's really poorly. Okay. And then he started to get a bit better because the antibiotics were working. Okay. But a week later, so we're still in hospital like five, six days later. Mm. And I turned to the nurses and I was just like, he's getting back to the same state he was when I brought him in. Right. Like he's getting worse again. Mm. So thankfully the ENT team at the hospital decided that they'd do the surgery there that he needed, okay. which drained the abscess, um, which was amazing. Like the fact that they were then able to offer that on, on site. Yeah. Um, and the relief in him, kind of, like you could see the improvement straight away. Once that initial infection was gone, yeah. the improvement was then 
overwhelming and I was starting to get this baby back that yeah. kind of I never knew for that first week no, absolutely. Um, and then yeah like he just bounced back he's now cheeky and he's five and <laughs> normal five year old yeah cheeky five year old but what what no one ever tells you is what you get left with as a parent yeah like so whenever he's had a temperature you kind of go oh man is, it, is this is this it is it, yeah. the start it back of it again, again? Yeah. yeah and you don't know and it's that kind of anxiety and like worry and you kind of go, and then you go, oh, I'm, over, I'm overreacting. He's only an ear infection or he's got a sore yeah. throat or it's just mm. the temperature. Mm. But you do, you worry that you're going to be in that same situation again. Yeah. I mean, we were fortunate that he never knows anything that what, about what went on. No, won't remember it. No, anywhere. won't remember it. No. My eldest son doesn't remember it. Mm -hmm. And it's only me and his dad that have got kind of the scars, scars to bear from for it. it kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's really interesting though. Like. Yeah how you then deal with it afterwards yeah. And, and yeah and it's, it's not just that time is it no. it is afterwards yeah massively time, time to recover from that yeah well. and even now like my youngest daughter is 20 months <laughs> i had to think about <laughs> 20 that months. <laughs> um, you are busy yeah, so that's fine <laughs> but the night she was born he starts spiking a temperature no. and i was like oh no why tonight like what if it happens again <laughs> like in sympathy yeah but oh. he was fine all fine yeah oh and it goes to show doesn't it even you know because of your profession as, yeah as a, you know as a pediatric nurse we 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 are worried and we, we get scared yeah. and we don't always have the answers at we all. don't and i think what you have to take from it all is ultimately you know your child yes you know if something if you might not know what it is that's wrong with your child yeah but you know that they're not quite right yeah. whether it's that they're not as bouncy they're not as they're not eating as much yeah they're very quiet they're very withdrawn yeah. anything and, and sometimes it's feeling yeah not anything too obvious is yeah it? absolutely yeah. and i don't think it matters what age your child is like malachi for me was a week old mm. but i still knew something was wrong yeah and and that feeling kind of grew the more it went on yeah. kind of thing absolutely. but yeah you do you do ultimately know your child so even if you kind of getting fobbed off by the doctors yeah if you know that your child's not right, you've got to stick to your guns and you've just got to keep Absolutely. going back and forth, forward if necessary yeah. and just seeking that medical attention. No. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing this No, it's been us. a pleasure. It's, it's really good to, to hear that first time. Yeah. You know, that information and hopefully that, that will help other parents. Absolutely. Thank you, Hannah. No problem.